focus, discipline. This is the Zero Excuses Podcast. Each and every week, we talk to high-performing, inspirational athletes, entrepreneurs, and leaders. We ask powerful questions to extract their tools, strategies, and life lessons for you to crush your excuses, to break out of your comfort zone, and accomplish your ambitious dreams and goals. Here's your host, Kenyon Zitzka. What's going on, everyone? Thanks again for tuning in to the podcast. We've got an awesome guest lineup for you guys. We have Art Geyser. He is the founder of Energetic Neuro Linguistic Programming. Before you start tuning out, I know that sounds pretty, uh, pretty woo-woo, pretty up in the clouds, but Art is here to dispel a lot of your, maybe your preconceived notions about, about something like this. This goes way beyond meditation or any of... The other tactics that I talk here, this goes really in depth, and Art also does a beautiful job of explaining all this in a very practical, comprehensible way that you or I can start to implement this into our day-to-day lives. And you know, tune in all the way to the end because he does a very, very powerful exercise that uh, I was a little skeptical of, admittedly, going into it, but you know. I was quite surprised how effective the uh, little exercise that he talked us uh, talks us through at the end uh, actually is, and you know I'm going to be implementing this into my uh, day-to-day uh, life. It, it was a very short, simple exercise, and like I said, tune into the end, grab a pen and paper, and yeah, this is going to be a powerful conversation. But before we hop into the conversation with Art today, got a couple quick reminders. First, if you haven't already done so, would appreciate it if you log into iTunes and leave us a rating and review. I've made it very simple for you guys. Just go to kenyanziska.com slash iTunes and I'll take you right to the Zero Excuses iTunes podcast homepage there. And lastly, if you want to implement these very strategies and the tools and the tactics and you also want the accountability to do all that, I encourage you to apply to be a part of my discipline coaching program. This is not for everyone. It's only for those who are serious about getting results in their life and want to invest the time, the resources, and the energy into getting those results. I do this by application only. You can fill that out at kenyanzitska.com slash discipline. It's a short, short survey that you'll fill out, and you'll also have the opportunity to schedule schedule a one-on-one, one-hour consultation with me. And we'll see if we're a good fit to work together. And if so, we'll be off off to the races and, and running with that. All right, guys, enough on all that. Hope you enjoy today's uh, conversation with Art Geyser. I know you're going to love it. Let's get into it. Art Geyser, I'm really excited to have you on the Zero Excuses podcast. I know this has been... Uh, this has been a tough, tough one for uh, both of us to uh, get our schedules lined up between hurricanes and uh, a little bit of surgery, uh, but we're finally, uh, finally having this conversation. Yeah, I'm really excited to be uh, talking to you tonight, and I mean, I think tonight will be the perfect night. Usually, if it's hard to get something like this to go, then it goes really, really well. So I'm excited. So you you practice energetic uh, neuro linguistic uh, programming. You've been doing this for uh, roughly thirty years. Um, you know, tell us a little bit more about yourself and and you know how you uh, came to do what you do today. And uh, then we'll dive into uh, what exactly that is. Well, I, I was always like a very logical person, even when I was a kid. And my my dad was an early computer guy. I wanted to be a scientist and work with radioactive materials when I grew Mm -hmm. up. And, um, but I was also always intrigued by things like dreams and the unconscious mind and telepathy and all of that fascinated me. And on some kind of inner level, I I knew there was something, I didn't necessarily think everything I heard about that was real, but I knew there was something really there. So I had both this very logical aspect of my life and this very mystical aspect. And when I graduated from college, I uh, ended up managing a research lab for the University of California Medical School in San Francisco, mm-hmm. which is a lot of people don't know that school because it doesn't have any sports teams, but it's right. one of the top research institutions in the world. And we were investigating how estrogen and progesterone affect the tissues in a woman's body. And, you know, so it was, I could go to lunch and hear Nobel laureates talk about things, but, um, but I knew I didn't belong there and I just had right. no idea what my path was. And I, I 
you know, now I understand it was my mental model was, was quite screwed up about it. And, um, uh, which I didn't realize at the time. And I just couldn't figure out what I was supposed to do. And I'd always believed that something was just going to appear to me. But as the years went on, I thought, well, maybe I'm just, you know, loser or neurotic or, you know, what's wrong with me. And, um, I went to a, a talk, uh, it's actually a talk on intuition and they took a break and I went out in the hallway and there was a bulletin board and I read a sign and it went neuro linguistic programming and literally felt like a bolt of lightning went down through the top of my head, down my midline, like completely through my body. And it was like, boom. And I have never felt anything like it before or since. And, you know, the scientist in me was going, what was that? And the um, mystic in me was going, well, what do you think it was? It was a sign. But, um, but I thought, you know, I didn't know what to make of it. And I went back into this talk. And even though it was a talk on intuition, they, they were selling books. And for some reason, they had an NLP book there. I have no idea why. It had nothing to do with intuition. And um, I thought, well, that's weird. Because I'd never even heard of it before. Mm -hmm. So I bought it, went home, and I started reading it. And um, uh, I'd always been interested in psychology, but it, it didn't seem right to me, a lot of it. I mean, I was pretty sure I didn't want to sleep with my mother and kill my dad and, you know, and all these kind of Freudian things that they were teaching. And, and it was also really, really slow. And I started reading this book on, on neuro-linguistic programming, and everything they were saying made so much sense. And the only thing about it that didn't work for me is they were making these really extravagant claims like, oh, we can cure phobia in one session and this and that and change deep beliefs in a session. And I'm, you know, and the scientist in me was going, that, uh, that seems ridiculous. I mean, because most psychiatrists would talk about you had to be in therapy for at least five years to, to do a lot of things. And, um, but then I, I heard about a, a program that was happening in NLP from, uh, People in NLP now uh, might not know the name Michael LeBeau because he retired back in 1985, but he was a really incredible developer of NLP. And he was given this super advanced course. I had no business being in it, but I just thought, I've got to find out if this is for real. Mm -hmm. And you know, five minutes into it, I went, okay, this is the right place. And it was like in two five-day segments. And you know, I, I was completely lost because people in the program were, were therapists and master practitioners of NLP and trainers. And I had no idea what anybody was talking about, except I was enjoying it. And when I came back for the second five days, in, in the first five days, I should say, we'd break into small groups and work with one another. When I came back for the second five days, all these people were coming up to me and go, you know, that work you did with me last month? I went, yeah. And they go, it changed my life. And I'd go, Really? You know, just about like that. And so, so then I was just hooked and, and had to like find out everything I could about it. And uh, one of the developers of NLP became my mentor and just amazing things happened. But this was uh, in uh, Marin County, which is right north of San Francisco. And there were a lot of people in the programs, or I shouldn't say a lot of people, there were people in the programs who were into mystical things and spirituality and energy healing and um, intuition development. And they started teaching me things, too. And one of them invited me uh, to meet this psychic at her house. And to make a long story short, and I came in late. He didn't have a chance to find anything about me. And there was a whole big group of people there. And he proceeded to tell me my deepest fear that I had never mentioned to anybody ever. <laughs> Which <laughs> is <I'm> what? <laughs> <laughs> I still don't mention it. Because <laughs> um, yeah. um, it's past now. And... Um, um, I, and it may not have sounded like that big a deal to anybody else, but I'm sure my eyes were like the size of uh, saucers and my jaw was open. And, um, and then he goes, oh, you don't have to worry about that. And I felt this weight come off my body. And, you know, I, I didn't worry about it after that. And so he was teaching a workshop the next weekend. So I took that. And by the end of the weekend, we were all doing amazing things. I mean, being able to uh, and I didn't know anybody in the group. We could tell people very specific things about their lives that we had no way of knowing. I mean, really specific things. And um, so then I started studying everything I could in NLP, but also studying uh, energetic healing, um, psychic development, intuition development, spirituality. And 
I found that when you put all of that together with the NLP, it was like one plus one plus one equals a million. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it just multiplied what you could do with any one of them alone. So that, that was the birth of energetic NLP. And that was, gosh, I guess about 34 years ago. Yeah. So we you've been mentioning it uh, over and over again. So what is NLP for for people who might be right. uh, might be hearing that term for the first time? Thank you. I'm sorry. Usually I mention yeah. it. So NLP stands for neuro linguistic programming, and the people who started it, as I mentioned, you know, not that many years ago, but in the 60s, 70s. Um, yeah. The traditional thought in psychology was that it took years to make deep changes. And there's an old Woody Allen movie where he's talking to this woman and he goes, I've only been in therapy for 12 years. And I, I'm not making fun of them, but I mean, and they did help people, but it was a really a long, slow process. The people who started in NLP identified six to eight people who were therapists who got magical, rapid results with people. Mm -hmm. So they began to study them and videotape them. And for, particularly for younger people, you know, videotape doesn't sound like a big deal, but this is when you had to have a, a you know, a three quarter inch tape thing on a big car, you know, it was, <laughs> you need a couple of people to carry it, you kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't being done. And they, one of them was a professor of linguistics and in certain fields of linguistics, they, um, they're trying to figure out how do people go from real experience in life to uh, to to words so mm -hmm. if you if you describe some great experience you had how do you put that into words and then how do i try to recreate that experience in my mind so i really know what you're talking about and and there's a whole fields in linguistics devoted to that and they went what if you could apply that to to people and the real experience is what's going on in their mind consciously and unconsciously that's creating their lives and what if if you knew how to analyze what they were saying, what they weren't saying, the cause effect relationships, um, how their eyes moved, what their body did, if you knew how to analyze that, you know, maybe they're telling you how their, their internal world is structured. Mm. And, um, and it turned out that was the start of this whole brilliant field. And at first they concentrated on using it therapeutically, but then they realized it didn't have to be for therapy. So, if you wanted to learn how to snowboard, you could go to a, a, a snowboard coach who would teach you how to move your body. Mm -hmm. well, an, an NLP snowboard coach would find out how a, snow, a great snowboarder thinks, and then they teach you how to think that way. Mm, okay. Because yeah. in NLP would say all, a lot of what people think are like genetic skills, you know, that some people are born with certain talents. When you really delve into it, a lot of it is they're thinking in a way that works really well and everybody else is thinking in, in different ways. And this is, works for everything from spelling to having great relationships, to being a leader, to getting a lot done. There's ways of thinking that will propel you forward and ways of thinking that, that will mess you up. And it isn't about intelligence. Um, I, I'm going to give you a simple example. When I was in high school, I wrestled and I played football and I hated being on the kickoff return team because it seemed like everybody knew where the football was going to land, you know, before I did. You know, I mean, I would eventually. And I, and I couldn't figure out how they knew. And, you know, my coaches and everybody go, well, watch the ball. And I go, I am watching the ball. And it wasn't until I started studying NLP I realized they would be watching the ball. What they meant was you, you create an arc in your mind. You know, mm -hmm. you look at the ball – and you can see the arc it's on, and then you look at where the arc ends. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's simple. Yeah. It's, it's simple visualization of physics. Yeah, yeah. You just yeah. look at the trajectory. Well, nobody says to do that because the people who do it assume that's what everybody does. So mm. they never. They would just say, "Watch the ball." And I go, "I'm watching the ball." <laughs> you know, and it's yeah. and. Um, you know, and that piece alone would have made me a lot better football player, you know, um, not to mention baseball player. But um, but that's just an example. And I've worked with people who couldn't do math, people who had artistic blocks and uh, people who didn't have good relationships or, you know, or weren't good leaders. Because I've done a lot of work with Fortune 100 companies on 
leadership, teamwork, uh, executive development. Um, and a lot of times it's just, if you, if person can change their mental model, and I know you're real into this, um, yeah. all of a sudden these skills open up because it wasn't, they weren't capable of the skill. So I, I, I give you one simple example. Some people could relate to it. If you think of a, uh, somebody who's a nerd and not in the, the um, complimentary, you're going to be a billionaire you know, <laughs> meaning of nerd, but nerd is somebody who's socially inept. Well, m- most people who act like nerds that way, who are socially inept, it isn't that they don't care about people. Most of the time, they don't know how to analyze people's nonverbal and vocal cues. Mm, mm-hmm. So, you know, a lot of times we communicate, you know, you change the tone of your voice or you get a look on your face or you stand differently. And people that are socially adept pick up on that. And people who don't pick up on that, they're always stepping on people's toes because they're missing what other people, people think are obvious signals. There, yeah, there's a yeah. lot of smart people that if you change the tone of your voice, they don't really notice it unless it's very extreme. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, that, so, so that's another thing. And so if you teach somebody to start paying attention to that, all of a sudden they get social skills. <laughs> right, right. It's, it's like you got to teach them to, uh, you know, I'm reading uh, Robert Greene's new book, uh, The Laws of Human Nature. It's almost like you have to uh, kind of act like him and be a little bit of a, a student of human nature in, in a way, right? Yeah, but it, and, and, and the thing is, it's the part of human nature that people almost never mention because the better somebody is at something, the less likely they are to tell you what they're doing inside of their mind that's working mm, because yeah. it doesn't occur to them. It's anything to talk about because it's too, it's too wired in for them. Yeah. So this, one of the things that, uh, that I've done is, you know, start this podcast because I had this big internal belief that, uh, you know, I was a quiet, shy person, shy gotcha. person. And you know, I just wasn't a good public speaker, but you know, I rewired myself to, you know, not really BS myself, but like just make a slight mental shift with, with that mental model and say, I'm not a good public speaker, but I can be with enough practice. It does NLP go much deeper than that. Oh yeah. And so in in NLP, you would be able to actually, if you worked with an NLP coach, they, we call it modeling out. You find somebody who is a really good speaker, you know, in the style that you want and you find out what are they doing inside of their mind? What are they paying attention to? What cause effects? So for example, some really great speakers and singers and actors and actresses do this a lot. They'll, they'll pretend they're out in the audience and go, how, how, how does this look? How does this sound? What, what needs to happen? I heard, I watched Garth Brooks on TV once and he would go around in stadiums and he'd be in the cheap seats, you know, and going, okay, what would need to happen on the stage for somebody up here to, to, to really get into it? Mm, okay. You know, so that, that's one of the skills that, the, that great presenters have is they can put themselves in the place of the audience and go, does this make sense? What do they need or what would they need to, um, uh, to really understand this? Um, and, uh, and it's a skill anybody can develop. It's just, but it's not a skill that a lot of people just naturally have developed. Yeah, or believe that they have the even the capacity to uh, to uh, develop. It, you know, because a lot of people might uh, believe that uh, that that they have a fixed mindset. I'm sure yeah. you've read that that uh, the book Mindset by Carol Dweck. There's so many people that I interact with that that are uh, very static, that um, yeah. you know, set in their ways. Uh, but how how you know, someone in the audience right now might be uh, thinking that to themselves. Well, I'm just set my ways. I can't, I can never reprogram myself. What are kind of those initial, uh, you know, if you're working with someone like that, what are uh, some of those first initial steps to kind of soften them up to uh, something like this? Yeah. Um, I mean, a lot of it I would do experientially with people, but, but, but one thing for people listening is everybody's listening to this call has changed their mindset in their lives. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they don't think like they did when they were five, you know? And so right. one thing is to help people realize that they change their mindset lots of times. And the other thing is there can be a lot of fear around changing uh, mindset. And in NLP, 
study a lot of interesting things. And one is, is what's called a reality strategy. So how do you know what's real and what's not real? And people's mental models are how they, they you know, become, they attach them to what's real and how does the world work. And, and human beings, particularly unconsciously, we get a feeling of safety because think we can predict things. We know how things work, even if we don't like it, which is why people, you know, some people go, oh, people are always mean to me. Um, and if, if people start being really nice to them, they may get uncomfortable because it's, it, you know, uh, or they, I've heard people say that when you work with really hardcore prison inmates and, and you really build rapport with them, a lot of them will go, I belong here. I'm a bad person. And the problem with that is if they ever get out, your, their unconscious mind will try to make that true because right. it gives us a sense of, you know, that predictability gives us safety. So, um, but the way I, I do it usually is, is very situational and there's ways that you can open people up to like change, you know, it depends on, on the, on, on the, whatever the, the circumstance is, but um, sometimes it's redefining criteria. So working with leaders and, and corporations and, and team members, you know, a lot of us have all this programming, we have to be right, we have to do it perfectly. And usually that's attached to an unconscious fears that are really big, like that. Um, a lot of people don't believe they have a right to exist if they're, if they're not right, or, or they're going to get hurt, or they'll never be loved. And, you know, they wouldn't consciously say it, but it, there's techniques you can do in, in NLP or in energy work to discover those like wired and unconscious beliefs. And so sometimes you need to work with to change those. So it really depends. But and the other the other thing is it depends on their motivation. If 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 somebody's like a happy camper and they're stuck, you know, they're not likely to change their mind very easily unless you help them find like a either a big negative or a big positive, you know, a big negative if they don't change it. You know, I, I mean, a simple example of that is, and, and, I, and I'm not trying to come down on smokers, but, um, um, you know, people who go, quit telling me not to smoke, you know, I like smoking, you know, and, um, you know, and then a lot of them, it does, it's only when they start getting sick that it becomes real to them that right. there's a problem. So, you know, there, sometimes you have to help people with the motivation, you know, so I, know, I, I don't have a real general answer. Yeah. Well, obviously, some people, uh, if they're uh, coming to work with you, they've uh, they've at least uh, um, made up their minds that uh, they're going to at least give it a chance. So, so maybe that uh, maybe well, that actually, was a bit of a tough uh, tough question for me to uh, pose to you there. Let me give you a better example. So yeah. you know, I'll run into people who go, "Oh, I don't believe in all this woo woo energy stuff," and I always laugh because like I managed a research lab at a medical school for 11 years. Mm -hmm. my, my corporate clients are pharmaceutical companies, high tech, um, financial institutions and stuff. So it's like, I'm, I'm pretty grounded in the real world. But people go, oh, I don't believe in invisible energies. And I go, huh, well, what's your uh, viewpoint on gravity? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. X-rays, ever gotten a sunburn? Not the visible light that burns you. You know, and you know, what's your view on physics? Because phys modern physics tells us that the human body has energy fields. You know, the, this is no longer the domain only of woo-woo. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, you know, and, you know, I had a guy once, I was speaking at a, at a thing and he came up and he goes, well, there isn't any research on energy work. And I went, actually, there's a lot of research on that. And some of it is really good, double blind, um, you know, hardcore scientifically done studies that, that indicate that it's real. And then he, and so first he goes, there wasn't any. And then he goes, well, none of that research was done well. And I went, a minute ago, you didn't know it existed. Now, without having seen any of it, you know it wasn't done well. I go, that's called a superstition. Superstition yeah. is you believe something, there's no real evidence for. Yeah, or so, you've never, or he's never uh, tried it. Yeah, and, and so he huffed and walked away. I wasn't trying to change his mind. I was just trying to have fun. But, um, but, but there are a lot of people who go, you don't believe in invisible energies, and I'll give them all the examples from their own life. And, and people go, well, yeah, that's true. And I'll go in, 
you do know that the body has energy fields they can measure it yeah i'm aware of that <laughs> you know it's going to go so why is this so woo woo you know just because science can't explain every bit of it doesn't you know it's like gra they can't explain gravity that well <laughs> no i mean <laughs> matter sticks together i mean it's, no. it's it's not uh it we we've hit the i believe button with it uh so we don't question it i mean because it's real we stick to uh the earth so yeah. <laughs> but uh you you've uh, been talking a little bit about energy which it sounds like the uh second half of uh what you do maybe let's dive a little bit uh, more into the, uh, you know, this, this energetic uh, piece of uh, what you do. Yeah. So this is in combining with this with the NLP is where you take the, the magic of NLP and just take it incredibly further. So the basic ideas in all energy work system is our bodies are made up of energy, which again is what quantum physics would say too. And um, they may not agree on the same energies and I like to point out to people that 92 human languages have a, a word for um, uh, human energy, you know, uh, and, and including Hebrew and Chinese. I mean, so pe it's not like a new thing. People have known about this forever. And, and sometimes when people go, I don't believe in energy, you know, I'll go, ever been to a football game with 30 or 60,000 people yelling. And, and it's funny, you hear these sportscasters go, the energy of the crowd, you know. <laughs> and, um, but, you know, some of those same people go, oh, I don't believe in energy, but they'll talk about it. So, yeah, um, yeah. but so the idea is that we have a human energy field. And, um, uh, and you can put a lot of religious or spiritual beliefs around this. And I, I'm, I try to do my work in such a way that it's very um, spacious. So I've had people who are atheists in my programs. I've had people who are very, very religious Christians and Muslims and, you know, and, and, you know, so I'm not, I'm not, I don't tell people what this all means, but there's a human energy system. And most people have heard the term chakras and aura. And, you know, I usually call them a more, you know, just energy centers and energy field. And, um, you know, the fact that people figured it out that they existed thousands of years ago in India doesn't make it not true. You know, it just means, you know, they, they understood it through, you know, the level of, of what, how, you know, where science and technology in their world was at. But um, our energy feels like every other part of our body get dirty. We're yeah, constantly yeah. absorbing energies. And, you know, I always tell people, like, if you look at your hands right now, what would your hands look like if you'd never washed them in your entire life? You know, they'd be caked with all this gunk, but you would think that was you. You would think all this stuff on top of the real you was you. And then if you fell in a river or a lake and it got washed off, you'd go, what's this stuff? Oh, you know, this actually feels better. Oh, this is me. Well, in the same way, people have been, it starts when you're in your mother's womb. We start absorbing other people's energies and other people's energies have thoughts and emotions in them and again for people who are new to energy work the idea that energy would carry thoughts or emotions uh can seem strange to people but that's how people are listening to us right now you know what we're saying is being turned into energy and turned back into sound waves which are energy the only way a, a human being can pass a, an idea to another human being is through energy if you're reading something, the photons of light are hitting it, bouncing back, you know, going into your eye, being turned into neurochemical signals, you know, and electrical signals that move through your body. All information transfer is through energy. And when you absorb energy from another person, you, you get their emotions and their beliefs and their programming. And, I, and I've had clients, um, and I'm thinking of one in particular, and she's going, yeah, I'm 52 years old and I, I'm anxious. I've always been anxious. And, you know, and I, I meditate and that calms me down. But then I get, I get anxious again and I go to therapy and I handle it better. But I, I'm always just anxious. And, and sometimes when I start working with that person, well, with this person, when I worked with her energy and cleared it out, it, it wasn't her anxiety. It was her mother's anxiety. Mm -hmm. And when we got that out of her energy field, she, she no longer had ongoing constant anxiety. Now she could get anxious, but she would get anxious when she, you know, when she should get anxious. You know? Right, right. Um, 
So does that make sense? You absorb this and, and, and the insidious part of it is you just think it must be you. Um, so in, in traditional NLP, you know, all thoughts and emotions we believe are generated by your conscious or unconscious mind. And, and there's more and more people in NLP who realize that's not true, but that was kind of the original thought of it. And that's great for a sense of personal responsibility. It's just not always true. People feel emotions all the time that aren't theirs. They have thoughts that aren't theirs. And you can learn to clear that out and connect with your authentic emotions and your authentic thoughts. And any emotion that somebody's worked with in their lives, but they either have it too often or they don't handle it well. So like there's a lot of guys don't handle anger well. You know, there's about a 99.99% chance it's because they've absorbed anger from other people, maybe from brothers, teachers, or dads, uncles. And as soon as they get angry, it activates that energy and then they can't control it, which is why, the, why people get out of control with road rage. Because yeah. people leave angry, frustrated energy all over the highway. And if you open up that doorway, it can just come in and flood you. And then people do crazy you know, things that they wouldn't have normally done. Yeah, this this totally makes sense because one of the big things uh, I don't know if uh, I mentioned this pre-show or not, but uh, I'm in the military, been in the military for 22 years, and one of the big things that we talk about in the military is that the leaders set the tone of the command, or you know, in my case, the ship, and you know, that was something that was driven home to us. We have to, uh, you know, within the confines of our leadership, uh, you know, our you know, we call it the chief's mess in the in the navy. Within mm -hmm. the confines of the chief's mess, you know, we hash things out in there but we don't let our anger show on the deck plates you know to the junior troops and the junior yeah. sailors you know we have to project that positive light because you know uh being being out in the middle of the ocean uh yeah. you know, the confines are small and that you know a, a negative uh command climate is you know it is like a cancer uh, on a ship and you know you can't yeah. it's hard to get rid of when you're out out in the middle of the ocean for months on end so yeah this is really this is really ringing a bell for me and i hope it is for everyone listening out listening out there well since you brought up the military the military has done a lot of research that they don't publicize oh yeah on, yeah. on energy work and, and i know in russia um it, it's funny for some reason in russia it gets published more in scientific journals and stuff too mm -hmm. um it's, I, 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 I can't read Russian, but I've had people who are Russian in my programs who go, oh, yeah, there's a lot of research in Russia. You know? <laughs> and, um, and we know their military was working on it. In fact, I, years ago, I worked with some Russian scientists who moved to the U.S. from the Soviet Union, and they had these energy machines that they'd been working on in Russia that could generate energies that were similar to human energies. And you could set them to different frequencies, and they were interested in, in using it in a healing way, but you could also set it at energies that would make people fearful or upset or anxious. Um, you know, there were a lot of military uses for that kind of stuff, um, as you can imagine. Um, so, you know, I just like to point out people, it's like, and the other thing here in California, it's an open secret that there are tons of very successful business people, particularly in Silicon Valley, but all over that, um, that uh, work with energy workers and psychics and stuff. And, and you know, and it's known Ronald Reagan did, you know, and, um, and Nancy Reagan. And um, um, there's, it, it's kind of, they don't talk about it because their stock prices would, would crash. But a lot of, of these guys are making big business decisions and stuff um, that involve getting counsel from people who work with energy. Mm. And they, everybody knows it's true. They just, you know, they don't want to talk about it because um, you can imagine what it would do for your stock prices. <laughs> yeah, so it, it might th sound like there's uh, like some witchcraft going on. People might get the wrong impression about that. But, you know, you do bring up a good point that, you know, we don't have to be these big wig executives or like Oprah or any of these, uh, you know, celebrities to, you know, start to embrace some of these, some of these ideas and start to implement some of these ideas into our own life. Because uh, I don't know what your opinion is on, you know, the pharmaceutical uh, industry, but I think we are, we are overprescribed a lot of, uh, you know, these uh, drugs. I've never been on them. 
so take that, if you're listening to that, yeah. take that with a slight grain of salt. But I, I really think that um, we can go to work on ourselves and, you know, we, we can start to uh, become less dependent on these, uh, um, you know, ADHD drugs and whatnot. We can, we can do work on our, on our minds to put ourselves into uh, a, a more positive and more productive uh, state of mind. Well, I believe that, and I believe, um, you know, when used well, pharmaceutical drugs are this incredible gift from God. There's yeah. a very famous healer in Brazil named John of God, and people come from all over the world to see him. And, and, and he'll say, he goes, doctors are God's light workers too. <laughs> and um, yeah. so I, I, I had a bad accident. I just had to have rotator cuff surgery. And um, I'm really glad they gave me some antibiotics before the surgery. Right. Yeah. So I'm with you. They, there's, the misuse is horrible, and obviously the opioid epidemic. And, and in fact, I've had so much less pain. I mean, people have blown away, my physical therapist and everybody. How, I'm not saying I don't have any pain from my shoulder surgery, but I had two ripped off tendons, a very ripped up other tendon, and then another one damaged. And people normally are in agony after that surgery for weeks and weeks. And, and I wasn't. You know, it hurt a little bit, but not much. And I, I'm not that tough. <laughs> you know, it wasn't, but, you know, I was having students and, and work on my energy. I was working on my energy. And what we do in energetic NLP is we also you go, okay, what, what, what in my unconscious programming and then, things that are called spiritual contracts and karma, what's tied in with this injury. And when you work on those things, the, the pain gets much less because um, they, they know in neurophysiology that the pain is a mixture of, obviously there's a reality, but when, when I was a researcher, this neuro the doctor who's a big uh, neurophysiology researcher, he went, the bane of pain is mainly in the brain. Mm. And Man, I'm writing that down. <laughs> yeah, isn't that great? The bane of pain is mainly in the brain. And, you know, and he was talking about it, you know, he, and hopefully you don't want anybody personally this happened to, but, you know, hereby people get their arms blown off in, in a battle. And sometimes they're not in much pain till later. And, um, and somebody else gets a paper cut and they're in agony. And it's, it's not because they're, you know, I was going to say wuss. I shouldn't say that word. <laughs> it's not because they're necessarily weak or something, but how we deal with pain is, is uh, both mental, it's physical, but it's mental and energetic even more. And uh, which is why you can use, use hypnotic processes with, with pain, but you, and you can do a lot with energy work too, to, to lessen pain. I mean, you don't want to mask it, but to lessen it. And, um, uh, and so like the pain I've had when I do certain movements, I'll get a sharp pain, which is good because I shouldn't be doing those movements. But in general, I, you know, I took the pain pills the first day I had the surgery, and that was it. Um, and again, it's not because I'm tough, but it was because I, I worked energetically, and I also worked on with with my mind, um, you know, and, and you know, and I just kept coming back to appreciation for the surgery, and I had to wear this big brace thing for a month, and um, and I was starting to resent it, and then I, I I went, this is my friend, it protects me, and it made me sound stupid, but you know, but by changing my mental model, it went from this stupid thing I have to wear that interferes with everything I do and, you know, my sleep to this, my buddy who's protecting me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's all how you look at it. And, and, you know, I, since I've really started doing work on my mental frame of mind, um, I don't think it's no coincidence that, um, I've barely got sick over the past two, two and a half years. I just like last week I had a little bit of a, a cold and it was barely uh, could barely notice that I had it. And, and that's been the, the extent that I've got sick. So there is definitely some sort of mind body connection uh, going on here. So I definitely, I definitely am a, you know, definitely believe all that. Well, the funny thing when I worked in the medical school and this was years ago, all the doctors knew there were mental components, you know, they, you know, they didn't know what they were necessarily or how to make sense of it. But, you know, they would talk about, they'd have a patient who they were sure was going to die, who'd be fine. Somebody who should have been totally fine who dies and just how people healed and responded. And they, they knew it wasn't just about you know, surgery and drugs and that there were these other factors that were mental. Um, 
So, I mean, again, this is no secret. People have known about this for thousands of years. What, what's great is now we have ways to work with it, both mm -hmm. the more psychological or NLP kind of approaches, and the energy and healing work is really developing too and being influenced by science. And, um, and so on both sides, these things are, are really, really um, uh, growing. And there's something I, I, I would like to say is there's kind of this myth out there that only certain people were born with gifts, like certain people are psychic or healers or, or this or that. And that's completely not true. Everybody, um, you know, can learn how to do this if they want to. Um, it's not everybody's path. It's not everybody's interest. But I just want people out there. I, I, I for years, I wouldn't even try it because I, I, I wanted to be able to do it. And I was afraid I would discover that I didn't have the gift, you know, <laughs> which right to me um, right now is very funny because he says modestly, I have a reputation for being quite good at what I do. Um, and, um, but now I realize everybody can do it. And if you really talk to people, almost everybody's, either they've had an experience or they know somebody who knew something, there was no way they could know it. And, um, or, you know, every, and, and, you know, hear people from the military talking about that they just knew, like maybe not to do something or, you know, that there was going to be people somewhere when there was no way, no way for them to know it, but they knew it, you know, and, um, you know, people talk about these kind of stories all the time. And um, so I just like people to know, like, it isn't some special weird gift that everybody, you know, that only some people can do. Everybody has these abilities. It's just a matter of whether somebody wants to develop them or not, which I highly recommend, but, um, and then getting, you know, good teachers. Because my first teachers were good in some ways, but they didn't teach me how to do it safely. And like anything else, it's powerful. Learning to work, open, opening up your intuition, learning to work with energy. The, if you know certain things, you can do it safely. And if you have support, but there, there's people out there like, oh, come for one day and we'll open you up. And which is what happened to me. And I, you know, it was ruining my life, you know. Yeah. So, um, you know, it just it needs to be treated with respect, but it, not fear. You know, just be like, you know, give somebody the keys to a car who's never driven and go have fun. And here's, <laughs> you know, there's the accelerator, there's the brake. I mean, you yeah. tell them, you know, okay, if it's raining, slow down a little bit. I mean, you know, it's just it's just knowing the rules. <laughs> yeah, you well, you mentioned uh, doing it safely, like what what trouble could someone get into, you know, trying to do this kind of on their own or learning on the fly? Well, the most common one is they start absorbing a lot of other people's energy, which is what I started doing. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then you start having emotional reactions that aren't yours. Um, it, you can start, some people get overly thin. A lot of people put on weight, particularly around the middle. Um, you can be tired all the time. It messed up my sinuses and my, a lot of sinus problems, there's energy channels around the eyes and the sinuses. And a lot of what people think are sinus problems are energy problems. And, um, and in, in fact, the first really good teacher I had, um, somebody introduced me to him. He was having a dinner and they, and they wanted me to meet their teacher. And um, I had horrible sinus problems. I mean, to the point where people would tell me sometimes they thought I must be doing coke or something because I'd sniffle <laughs> all the time. And what I didn't realize is I was doing all this powerful NLP and energy work with people. When they would change, they'd release energies and I would be absorbing them. And they were clogging up um, energy centers all over my body, but really in my head. And so I felt kind of dull and my, and my sinuses would actually react to it. And I remember think, I thought, in particular, if somebody got emotional, it would really affect my sinuses. And I, and I began to think, is this psychological or something? What's wrong with me? And when I met this teacher, John Norman, he, and my friend Ron introduced him, he goes, oh, you know, John, this is my friend Art. And John looks at me and he goes, he goes, you're very psychic. You pick up a lot of things in what are called the telepathic channels, these energy channels in your head. And then he goes, you think it's sinus problems. And I went, 
Oh my God. Cause it was the first thing that made sense. You know, after seeing 20 doctors and whatever. Yeah. And when, and when I learned to start clearing the energy out of those channels, my sinuses got a million times better. <laughs> you know? Meanwhile, I thought I have allergies or psychosomatic. And, and a lot of, I, I've had worked with a lot of people who, you know, their doctors who go, well, there's nothing wrong with you. It's just, you know, um, it's, it's just psychosomatic. And then people, not only do they have whatever the physical symptoms are, but then they feel bad because they think they're, you know, neurotic or something. And a lot of times if I teach them to clear their energy, what the symptoms go away. And I'm not blaming the doctors. It's not part of the medical model for most. There are some doctors, but for most of them. So they just, they can't figure out what's wrong. Um, in fact, a friend of mine had really, really bad emphysema. And I mean, really, really bad. And um, uh, I would take him to Brazil to see this healer, John of God. And his Beverly Hills pulmonary doctor, who was, wasn't into any of this stuff, you know, when I talked to him, he goes, I don't know what you guys do in Brazil, but keep doing it because every time he comes back, his lung functions are better. And I, and I went, is that unusual that somebody with really bad emphysema's lung functions are getting better? And he points at me and he goes, your lung functions are getting worse every day. He goes, yes, it's, you know, people's lung functions don't tend to get better, period, but when you have bad emphysema, no. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, and it, it couldn't fit his model, but so he'd just go, whatever you do there. You know, he didn't even want to know. Just keep doing it. Whatever yeah, it just, is. just kept hitting the I believe button. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, what, you know, everyone out there listening right now is probably, you know, might be uh, thinking to themselves, wow, this is, this is a lot of stuff to absorb right now. Um, you know, probably the best bet is to maybe uh, seek out someone who, you know, does work similar to you to, if, if this is of interest to them. But, you know, are, are there some maybe one or two uh, practical things that we can implement in our life uh, right away right now to maybe start, you know, start yes. moving down this path? Yep. Um, and, and let me just mention, uh, I've set up a web page. So my web page is energetic NLP or people can just go to enlp7.com. But if they go to energetic NLP slash um, zero for zero excuses, mm -hmm. I've set up a web page and there's uh, two um, videos on there. One teaches people three basic but really, really important energy techniques. And, you know, they'll, they'll know how to do it by the end of the webinar um, that they can use to do things like clear out their energy be more grounded, retrieve their own energy. Because it isn't just um, that we absorb other people's energies. Other people are absorbing our energies and it weakens us. So, I, so in it, I teach people how to clear other people's energy, how to clear um, some of the unconscious blocks and energy programming that those energies hook into. So on that page, they can get that. There's another a video that um, is about connecting with there's these incredible and I, I like to use vague terms because again I, I'm not trying to impose my beliefs on people but there's a, a, a video teaching people how to connect more with spiritual energies that can help them and whether you think that's God or angels or Allah or Buddha or whatever you know I, I mean that's not you know again I'm not putting my views on anybody but it teaches people how to open up to spiritual help and the third thing on that page is if people are, are uh, want to go deeper they can have um, they can click on a link and fill out a questionnaire and I can't take everybody but uh, my associate Pat Duran and I will do like an, a one-on-one -on -one, um, we call it a discovery and motivation session with people where, where they'll look at where they are in their life where they want to be and and we'll look at what will it take for them to create the life that they want and some of that will be on a more normal, practical level, but we'll also read the person's energy because uh, one of the things we specialize in, in remote energy work and, and point out to them things that, that are holding them back that they're not aware of and what to do about it. So that's all free. And again, it's energeticnlp.com forward slash zero. But I can teach people a simple, powerful technique right now. Um, uh, how much time do I have? <laughs> you take as much time. Like I, I'm all ears. Take as much time okay. as you need. Okay. 
Um, so there's a couple things. The hardest thing about teaching people about energy work is that it's really, 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 really easy. And people have trouble accepting that. So if everybody listening was five years old and I taught them this technique, they'd do it brilliantly. You know, they, they wouldn't go, am I doing it right? Is it real? They'd just try it and giggle and it would work. So um, uh, the first thing I want to say to people is, uh, you know, relax about it, have fun with it. If it doesn't work the first time, this is a podcast, you know, you can play it back. Um, a friend of mine who's incredible at energy work, he went through about a year of being kind of the class dummy. You know, I say that affectionately. He was like the worst person in the class at, at everything. And now he's incredible at it. And he teaches people and he's really, really, really good. Um, so, you know, it isn't about doing it immediately. So, Again, let it be easy, be playful with it. There are energy systems and spiritual systems that are about being serious. Um, that's not what energetic NLP is. We find if people are playful with it and just pretend it's gonna work, um, it's much, much easier. The other thing, there's a, a term we have in energetic NLP that people will never have heard before. It's called your miraculous self, your miraculous self. And it, it's not the same as a high self. It's not the same as whatever people are thinking. And where this developed, and a big part of energetic NLP is what we call whole being alignment, where somebody's spirit, their soul, their conscious mind, their unconscious mind, and their body are all aligned. And when you have whole body, whole being, I should say permission, alignment, things flow in your life. And any aspect of, of of a listener's life um, uh, that, that isn't going well that they've worked on, the likelihood is there's not alignment there. And when there's not alignment and permission there, it's kind of like you go to this fantastic restaurant and the waiter comes up and you go, what do you want to eat? And you go, um, I'll have the steak. And then you go, oh, oh no, wait, I'll have the vegan meal. And then you go, I'd like a salad. And then you go, um, how about chicken? And you just keep cycling and the waiter just looks at you and goes, well, you know, pick something, you know, <laughs> and, you know, people learn about, you know, the secret and visualizing what they want, but it isn't just your conscious mind. Your, your spirit has things in mind. Your soul has things in mind. Your conscious mind has things in mind. Your unconscious mind has more than one agenda and your body has an agenda. So we, we get people to get all that in alignment, but, uh, for a simple start on that, um, we, we say that when a person's inner wisdom and when their spirit are in alignment, that forms what we call your miraculous self. So it's when your spirit and your inner wisdom are working together. The reason you want both of those working together is a person's spirit has, whether you're conscious of it or not, has a vast awareness of who you are, how you fit in the universe, you know, what's going, you know, how your life fits in. And your inner wisdom is very human and has the, the, the perspective of your human self. And it's not that a person's spirit doesn't care about their, their human life. It just sees it differently. And in my experience, people's spirits are often like the, the perfect parent going, whatever you want, dear. You want to have heartbreak? Like, oh, okay. You, you want to have true love? Well, yeah, that, that's another valid path. You want to struggle financially? that's a valid path. You want to be abundant. Well, that's, that works too. You know, you know, again, not because it cares, but it just gives us incredible permission to have, to create a life where the human wisdom is going, uh, you know, from down here, it isn't all the same. Thank you. I'd, I'd rather not have my heart broken and rather have abundance. So when they work together, they're essentially telling the waiter the same things. So whenever we do an energetic NLP process with people, we have them set the intention, whether, whether they believe they have a spirit or not. But just, uh, and if you don't, for people who just can't handle that idea, then just put your inner wisdom in charge. But for everybody else, you know, just take a moment and go, okay, my, my miraculous self, my inner wisdom and spirit are in charge of what happens in this process. As simple as that. And as, as as sentient beings, as thinking beings, people have a right to make choices in their life. So you're just going, I'm choosing to put my inner wisdom spirit in charge, my miraculous self in charge. And, and notice my tone of voice. It's not like, 
I'm putting them in charge. Um, and you probably saw this in the military that there were some leaders that were, you know, they didn't talk loudly or anything, but they commanded total power and respect. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And my, my experience is the most powerful people, you know, they don't have to go, uh, you know, they just, they don't they have to be the drill, drill sergeant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a general doesn't have to talk like that. They may sometimes, but they don't have to. What they say will happen, you know, right? Yeah. And, um, um, and, and so when we're in our power, we don't have to go, oh, I'm putting it in charge. Just go, I'm putting it in charge. Done. And resistance may come up in people's minds. They may feel resistance or have thoughts. And, and they may not make sense. I mean, I'm not worthy or this or that. And if resistance comes up, what I advise people to do, and you know, in the advanced programs, we really get into ways to change the resistance. But the, the first easy, powerful thing to do is just to treat it the same way you treat your friends and loved ones when they're saying something and you want to be polite, but you have no intention of doing what they say. Mm -hmm. you, know, you listen to them and go, I heard you. And then you forget about it. <laughs> it's like be, just being a little empathetic towards your, uh, is, yeah. is, it, is it your mental chatter? Is, is yeah. that basically what, what's happening there? Yeah, because it's, you know, you know the saying, what you resist persists. Mm -hmm. So if you get in an argument with your mental chatter, you, you actually make it stronger. Where if mm -hmm. you just go, thank you, I heard you. And then you, you ignore it. You know, it's, it's other people call that mindfulness. You know, it's just, you just notice it and go, okay, I notice you. Yep. And I'm not going to fight you and I'm not going to feed you because I get to decide. <laughs> That's just it. Um, and then in, in energetic NLP, something, you know, the people know for long from other fields, but that I learned from NLP was that symbols and metaphors have incredible power with our unconscious minds. Um, you know, it, it, it's why people will die to save a flag. You know, it, it's, you know, symbols are real to us. You know, if, you, if somebody accepts a symbol, it, it has a reality to our unconscious mind. And some symbols are kind of like metaphors. And it, this is a whole big subject, but the short version of it is, if you give your unconscious mind a symbol or a metaphor for something, even if it doesn't seem to logically connect, your unconscious mind can often do it. Mm. It, it gets the point, you know, um, so like some people, if they have a thought they don't like, they'll imagine a little trash can like on their computer screen and they'll throw it in it and push delete. You know? And, you know, and if that appeals to you, it'll work most of the time. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, now, what that means, you know, how the, does the brain delete it? Who knows? But, but your unconscious mind goes, oh, I know what that means. So one of the kind of symbol metaphors I love to use is the idea of a magnet you know, speaking of invisible energies, because almost everybody played with a magnet when they were a child. So it's wired into your unconscious mind. Then a magnet is something that has energy. And I'm sure you, you've done this. You, you held a magnet up and a pin up and you let go of the pin and it goes to the magnet. Um, so your unconscious mind knows that if it lets go of something, the magnet will grab it. So and I'm going to describe this as a visualization. By the way, the technique's easier than the explanation is. Um, yeah. Uh, technique is going to be real quick and easy. Um, but the setup's important. Um, so I'm going to describe this as a visualization. But one of the things we discovered, in, or they discovered in NLP, is that if you pretend to visualize something, even if you don't see it consciously, you'll see it unconsciously. So if I go visualize an elephant, some people listening are going, I don't visualize well. But if you pretend you're visualizing an elephant, your unconscious mind will, in fact, visualize it. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, so it's a long winded way of saying, don't worry about it. Just pretend you can do it. So if anybody's listening to this while they're driving, don't do this while you're driving. Either you know, turn it off or ignore it. Um, because... It, when you start working with energy, it can make you a little spacey. Not, you know, and you don't want to be spacey when you're driving. <laughs> Not at all, though. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This gets people to go inward. You don't want to be inward when you're driving. You want to be outward. Um, so, again, if anybody's listening to this while driving, just uh, either turn, turn it off, finish it later, or, or ignore this part. 
So for the people who aren't driving, uh, imagine a magnet out in front of you, you know, and it could be, you know, 12 feet or more, you know, um, six meters or more in front of you. And just pretend that it's an energy magnet and it can pull energies out of your body and energy field. And then give your miraculous self, your inner wisdom and spirit permission to identify energies that are in the front part of your energy field. So the energy field goes all around you, like kind of like a, a sphere. I mean, it's not that regular. Um, so part of your energy field is in front of you and it goes into your body. So give your, your miraculous self permission now to release to that magnet any of the energies in the front of your energy field and body that your um, miraculous self wants you to release. And just pretend it goes off now. I'm doing this right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I, I amuse myself. I see little you know, squiggly lines and forms yeah. and things go off, but you don't need to, I, but I, I yeah. like that. I'm, I'm visualizing uh, one of those uh, Looney Tunes uh, cartoon magnets and uh, Bugs Bunny or uh, Wile E. Coyote is holding the uh, magnet out in front of me. That's perfect. You know, because yeah. that's inherently playful. So cartoons <laughs> are great. You know? It's like, how serious can you be about Wile E. Coyote, you know? Um, yeah. <laughs> And if some of you are listening from other countries, so pick your own cartoon characters. <laughs> um, and then so, and you don't get in a tug of war. Uh, if, if some of the energy fights back, leave it alone for now. There, there are things to do about that, that that I describe on those free webinars that I mentioned, uh, the free videos. But just whatever goes off easily. And then you imagine the magnet just drops into the earth and the earth recycles the energy, which means either it sends the energy back to the person it belonged to, or if, or if the energy wouldn't be good for them, it just turns it back into pure energy. You know, kind of like in the same way, like composting it, it just dissolves it down. Nice, recycle it. Yep. And then, so we're going to do four magnets in all. You float another magnet high above your head. And people's energy fields typically go up at least nine feet, three meters above their head. And give this your miraculous self permission to identify energies from your shoulder, uh, in your neck, in your head, in your eyes, in your brain, in your scalp, in the back of your head, in your forehead, and all around your head. Any energies that aren't yours that, that your miraculous self wants you to release go up into that magnet high above your head now. And it clears that whole space. There, there's actually energy centers of chakras above people's heads too. And, and uh, your, your people's spirit and inner wisdom know what I'm talking about. So just let them clear that whole space above your head. You take that magnet, drop it into the earth and let the earth recycle it. And then my favorite is put a magnet way behind you and let it clear from the center of your body to behind your body to your energy field behind your body. Let it start releasing energies because a lot of energies literally hide behind your back. So just let them release off to the magnet. And drop that into the center of the earth. And then the fourth and last magnet, you put that in the earth and it clears from the base of your spine, down through your legs, your feet, the soles of your feet, and going down at least a meter, three feet below your feet and all around you. Let that magnet pull energies off that whole lower part of your body and energy field. And then there's a, a very quick and easy second part to this. So I mentioned it isn't just that we absorb other people's energies. We leave our energies all over the place. We leave it in our cars or on a plane, on a bus, on the highway, um, at work. You know, we leave it in other people. Imagine a gold ball of energy floating above your head and give your miraculous self permission to retrieve your energy from wherever you've scattered it, past, present, and future. And if your miraculous self thinks that you should leave some of your energy in a particular person's energy field, uh, occasionally that's true, particularly if somebody has very young children. Um, but let your M figure, your, sorry, 
we call your miraculous self your M a lot. Let your miraculous self figure that out and just let it send back into the gold ball all of your energy it wants you to retrieve. Past, present, future, and again, wherever you've left it. And then that gold ball cleans up the energy, charges it up, and analyzes the energy. And if the energy is truly authentically yours, it sends it back into your body and energy field now. So you retrieve your authentic energy. And if there's any spaces left in your body or energy field, gold energy comes in and fills those up. And then you dissolve that gold ball and that's all there is to it. So just to review it real quickly, it's four magnets, one in front, one above, one behind, one below. You, you put your miraculous self, and again, we call that your M for fun, um, which is your inner wisdom and spirit. You put that in charge and you just let the magnet in front of you pull off whatever energies your M wants you to release. If there's any tug of war, you leave those alone. That magnet drops in the earth, you recycle it. You do the same thing with the magnet above you, same thing with the magnet behind you, and the same thing with the magnet below you. So you release into it and then drop it into the earth. You finish up by imagining a gold ball of energy above your head and let your miraculous self use it to retrieve your energies, clean them up, charge them up, and it, the gold ball sends your energy back into your body and energy field. And you don't never want to leave spaces in your energy field. So if there's any spaces, gold energy comes in and fills them up. Because gold energy is kind of like food. It's a it's a very spiritual, neutral energy you can use in different ways. And um, how, how did you like that when you did it, Ken? Um, when I when I envisioned the uh, the magnet above my head, uh -huh. um, you know, I'm big into CrossFit and, and uh, you know military style rucking events, and mm. my my traps, my shoulders are, are constantly sore. So when I was visualizing the the magnet yeah. above my head, I, I was visioning the you know that soreness. Um, is oh, one nice. of those energies leaving, and you know the soreness is definitely still there, but it like I definitely feel a difference afterwards. Yeah. So it, you know, it's, it's pretty mind blowing actually. Yeah, people typically will say things like, "I feel lighter" or "I feel more energetic." Sometimes they'll go, "I feel sleepier," which isn't bad. They're just sometimes when you release energies, you process it, and it can make you just a little spacey or sleepy. But um, but yeah, like what you said about your shoulders, that sounds right. And, and that's what I was saying about pain earlier. When you, when you release a lot of the energy, so the t some of the tension's still there, but it lightened it. And, and energies that were sticking to that tension, making it worse, are released. So it's going to feel better, even if it's not you know, totally gone or anything. Right. I mean, there's still like that physical aspect of it. But yeah. 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 But it actually lets in more of the body's natural healing energies too. Mm -hmm. Because when, you, when, you, when energies in the way, they block healing, they block thinking. They, um, a lot of people really notice the, the magnet behind them. And um, I should say to people, it works whether, you know, being able to notice the energies or to feel them or see them it, is a skill that anybody can acquire, but it works whether or not people feel it. And, it's kind of fun when you feel it, but, um, but it, it works just as well whether you feel it or not. And for the people who like this process, and even if they didn't like it, if they want to experiment, for a week, do it when you wake up in the morning. Just take two minutes, magnet in front, above, behind, below, gold, gold ball, retrieve your energy. Do it when you first wake up. And I'm one of those people who, I used to always wake up like, Ugh, you know, <laughs> and, and, now I wake up, I do this, and you know I retrieve my energy, bring in the gold energy, and you know, and then I'm I, I go from Ugh, to like hello world. If I have yeah. an important meeting, I do it before the meeting. Um, like I, you know, I might go into the bathroom and do it, or I might just do it in my mind. Um, if you do it before you go to sleep, you go to bed. People typically sleep better; they get better rest because you know how like thoughts and stuff can be churning in your mind. Um, when you clear your energy before you go to sleep, um, I'm not saying every night people will sleep well, but most people will sleep much better and much more deeply. 
and wake up feeling better. Um, oh, oh yeah. I, I, I practice, uh, you know, journaling and stuff and letting go of thoughts. Yeah. And, you know, this is going to take that to the next level. And I definitely, when, when I do a good job of uh, getting my thoughts down on paper, I, I definitely sleep better. So I'm, I'm excited to see what this is going to do, do for me tonight. By the way, it's also a great thing to do before and after dealing with somebody, you know, let's say a, a difficult person you work with, or you're going to see an ex, or you're going to see family. Yeah. You know? Um, you know, I've had people do it and go, gee, this is the first, this is the best Christmas I've had with my family in years. Because it will bring up the childhood stuff. And if you do the magnets, you can clear a lot of it, yeah. you know, and, and, and just be present and be the adult you are rather than, you know, still dealing with childhood issues with your parents. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It sounds like a lot of this will, uh, you know, help, uh, you know, like you mentioned before, help accelerate people through uh, therapy. And, you know, this is your own way oh, of uh, your own tool you can implement when, when you're, uh, when you're uh, you know, dealing with certain issues. And it's so simple. And, you know, it sounds, you know, it sounds kind of silly, but, you know, going through this with you right here kind of live. I mean, when people listen to this, it'll be recorded, but doing this live with you, you hear right here, right now, I definitely noticed the difference and it, and it yeah. works. Yeah. It, it, it really, and, and you can do it by the way, physical things too. So I had a student who's a dance teacher up in, in Vancouver. She teaches this to her dancers and it really helps them. You know, it helps with performance anxiety, helps them, you know, just get into the dancing. And so, you, you know, you can do it with sports it, it it it's kind of like those ginzu knife commercials it slices it die i mean you can use it pretty much for everything in your life and like i say people just took two minutes did it in the morning two minutes did it at night over time it would really improve their lives and if you do it again before or after like some difficult or important thing um uh, it really you know, yeah people use it in their corporate settings all the time and it makes a huge difference in their ability to be present and, and, and deal with people and events in, in a much more effective way. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Art, you know, this has been, this has been awesome. I, I, that's the only way I could put it, but uh, we're, we're definitely starting to run short on. Uh, yes. On here, but uh, is there any, uh, it, you know, you already mentioned the uh, websites. How, how else uh, can people get in touch with you? Are you have any social media or uh, email address they can uh, reach out to you at? Sure. Um, the easiest email address is art at E-N-L-P, the number seven, dot com. So for energetic NLP, art at E-N-L-P, uh, seven, dot com. Uh, if they look up energetic NLP on Facebook or, or Art Geyser, um, G I S C R, um, uh, on Facebook, they can find me and, um, I'd love to hear from people. I do tons of free, uh, uh, video programs where we go through energy processes. And uh, I think if, if people have liked what we, what we did tonight, you know, when, when we're focusing on just working on the processes uh, we can do a lot in an hour and a half, I mean, life changing stuff. So, and, Again, uh, you know, this isn't faith healing. I, you know, it isn't about people believing in it or not believing in it. I just encourage people to have an open mind. And, um, and if people are interested, they're, they're, uh, there's people like Dean Radden, um, uh, if they look on YouTube, who's a scientist. There's, there's scientists you can find on YouTube who can talk about really solid research on energy work. That, so... It is as much as anything's proven in science. It's proven now that energy works real. You can do it at a distance, and that it transforms people's lives. So, you know, um, uh, it isn't just you know. I, I like to say to people, just because something's ancient doesn't mean it's not. It's all wrong. You know. <laughs> Yeah, it improved people's lives back then. It can improve our lives now. So, yeah, and they may have explained it in terms of gods or goddesses or whatever. Um, but you know, we may talk about quarks or something. But the basic principles are, are still there, and people are improving them every day. Uh, I'm amazed at how everything's advancing. It's quite extraordinary. Awesome. Well, I'm definitely going to be uh, keeping in touch with you, Art, and encourage everyone right. listening out there to do the same thing. And I, I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be doing 
I'm going to be diving into this a little more because uh, just like I said, just this little bit that we did uh, here uh, on the show, um, you know, it's got me uh, pretty geeked out about it. Well, thanks. And, you know, and I don't want to just appreciate you for having this show. I, you know, I've started listening to a number of the podcasts and they're really good. And, you know, just so much great um, advice for people about how to um, have a zero excuses life, you know, so, yeah. so keep up the great work. Awesome. Art. Well, I appreciate those words and, and I appreciate your time coming on here. Uh, you know, we'll put all the, uh, the uh, links and everything uh, that you mentioned, all the resources in the show notes. And uh, like I said, appreciate you coming on, man. Hey, thanks. And thanks everybody for listening. All right. Take care. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to the Zero Excuses podcast. Join the conversation at KenyanZitzka.com in our Facebook group. And don't forget to rate and subscribe to our show. We'll talk to you next week. And always remember, results, not excuses.